Okay, here's the latest Heathkit SB102. Had a couple of issues, but uh, you know, nothing too bad. It's in uh, actually pretty good shape. Put a different CW filter in it. The one in it was uh, the wrong IF frequency. It had some S meter issues uh, as far as not being able to zero. And it's still a bit generous. But uh, a couple other little things. The dial is not as cracked and been glued together, so it's a little rough in a couple spots, like up around 40. I don't know if you can see that or not. But, um, and somebody applied some really good touch-up paint to a couple spots on the front panel. That's a pretty close match. you got to look real hard to see those. Anyway, um, it's working pretty good now. I uh, did a couple of things to it. Let me uh, take you under the hood here. Hang on. So this is very similar to a, a Heathkit Hot Water 101, which I built many moons ago with my first uh, sideband transceiver. The difference is this has a TRW built um, LMO, which is very stable and very linear. So what did I do? Um, there were some resistors. Uh, somebody has done some work on this before. Some of these resistors down here were the wrong value. So straighten that out. It's part of the S meter bridge circuit. And right here we have a 200 ohm control 10 turn pot that I strapped to this IF transformer. And that allows a stable S meter zero. Over here was the same control for carrier null, and somebody had already replaced that. And it's been, it's got upgraded electrolytics, and, and it's uh, been wired very well, so it looks good underneath. One thing I forgot to mention here, talking about uh, the cosmetics here of the radio, Somebody at some point replaced the original mic connector with a reverse gender. In other words, it had male pins in it rather than sockets. Um, and I can't believe I had one of these in my junk box. Um, so I replaced that. So it'll made up with a, uh, any microphone that's wired with a Heathkit connector. Okay, so one of the things we did was uh, mess around with. Um, CW here a little bit. I shifted the CW carrier oscillator so that the uh, pitch is a little bit lower. When uh, this thing first came in it had 1100 Hertz, just shy of 1100 Hertz, 1 1.1 kilohertz offset and that's really screeching hard on the old ears here. So I was able to bring it down by adjusting, or by putting a trim cap in series with the CW carrier oscillator crystal and brought it down to about 800 hertz. I can bring it down even lower except then when I use the CW filter we start losing power out and I imagine some sensitivity too. Anyway, let's tune around for a second. We're on 40 meters listening in, uh, through the sideband filter. Okay, there's two stations there. Yeah, CW filter makes a huge difference. So you can see the effectiveness of that 400 hertz filter. I'll go up to sideband here, hang on.
Some kind of a pile up here. I think the yes meter is a little too generous. But I, well, Quite a pile up. I don't know where he is. Band is open tonight. It's going to get cold tonight, I guess. Anyway, sounds good on sideband, both transmit and receive. Hooked up a microphone to the new mic connector and uh, made a couple test transmissions and listened to myself. We're going to put this thing on the air later tonight and get a couple live on-air reports, both sideband and CW. So, anyway, that's the uh, that's the uh, Heathkit SB102. Cost about $400 in the early 70s, uh, compared to like $250 for the HW101. So, pretty deluxe. The only complaint I've got is once again, like the HW101, they didn't think enough about the CW operator to include an RIT. So, back in those days especially, you're still kind of chasing each other around the band at times. But uh, no RIT. Other than that, it's pretty, pretty nice. In fact, uh, hang on just a second. Well, I'll try something later. But uh, anyway, that's the SB-102. Pretty nice old rig. Real nice transceiver. Keep on tinkering. <laughs>